Today we're going to be taking a look at a few different solutions for the classic problem of prop drilling. If you haven't heard the term prop drilling before, uh, you've almost certainly seen this and experienced it. Basically what this refers to is the process of passing a prop from one component down to many, many children because the very low level component needs some value from a higher level component. Often this involves passing through many unrelated components, uh, which is really not desirable and ends up with fairly brittle and hard to refactor code, among other things. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few different solutions to this problem. I've used all of these solutions in practice and I'm going to give you my thoughts on each one and when I like to use them. I'm going to try and give examples in both Vue and React, but this problem is very common across pretty much every component development framework. Let's go ahead and start with the very first one or the zeroth one, just pass the prop. Obviously this is where the problem originally comes from, but it's not necessarily a problem in a fairly simple application. As noted here, it is very, very simple, uh, but the downside is a lot of duplication and it's also especially annoying if you need to mutate the value. So you may pass a value maybe six or seven levels deep, and then if the child needs to mutate the value, you need then to pass a function or an event handler to be able to mutate way back up the top. Uh, for that reason, we're not going to consider this approach, but it's obviously very useful for simple components or props that don't have to go very far. The next solution we're generally going to talk about is state management. And here is an example. I have here an app code. Uh, this could be a view or react. In this case, it's view. And we're going to be taking a look at this one here called message store. Uh, pretty much every framework is going to have some sort of store. Uh, in React, you have Redux or many, many others. Uh, in Vue, people tend to use the same one called Pina, and that's what I'm going to be talking about here. So in this example application, I've got four different uh, values, and these can be mutated at a much lower level. So in this case, we're passing this value down to what we can assume is a fairly deeply nested component. In this case, we're using our Pina store. Let's go and have a take a look at that and see how it is set up. The way you install this is generally at the top of your application, so the values can be accessed everywhere. In this case, I'm just getting create pina and I'm installing it down here. Uh, in React, you probably have something like a store provider for Redux or whatever framework you are using. The reason you do this at the top level is so you can access that value or that store throughout your entire application. Then generally, you're going to have something like this. You define your store and you go ahead and define some state. In this case, I have a message and I also have an action, which is going to allow me to update this message by calling set message. Uh, in Vue, you can just mutate these values directly. So that's what I am doing here. If we go ahead and, ahead and take a look at this, I say use message store. Then I simply go ahead and pass that one to my input to be able to mutate it. And down here, I'm going to pass it at, to my deeply nested component. If we go ahead and have a look inside of here, I just go ahead then and say use message store again. Then I grab my value. It really is as simple as that. Uh, so this is probably the most common solution you're going to see. Uh, and this is obviously pretty good for a number of reasons. It does scale, you can make as many stores as you need. And it is a very standard approach. Uh, pretty much every application out there is going to have some sort of state management solution. And once you've seen one, it's generally applied in the same fashion across uh, different applications out there. Uh, the obvious downside is this is very heavy handed for maybe a single value. If you have a very large store concerned with a single concern, maybe a user store or maybe a task store, uh, I think it does make sense to have a kind of global store containing all that logic. Uh, but in this case, I don't have that. I just have a simple message. Uh, and for that reason, this feels a bit heavy handed. I'm pulling an entire dependency just to update one string. Uh, probably not ideal. So in this case, there is another alternative, which I've been calling a composable or a hook in React, I believe is uh, the term they use. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this one now. If we head over to our app, we have our use message composable here, and it destructures for a message value. Let's go ahead and take a look at use message right now. It is fairly simple. We declare our variable up here. It is going to be reactive. We have our use message, and we're going to go ahead and just return an object with our reactive value. Uh, we now have access to that and if we'd like to use it we just head over to our deeply nested component we go ahead and say use message and then we have access to it to uh, render in our application uh, again that one is pretty simple as well uh, in view everything is uh, mutable it's a mutation based reactivity so i could just go ahead and say message.value is equal to foo or something like this and go ahead and mutate it i don't particularly like to do that if I do have to mutate this value, uh, instead of making it just a one-way kind of uh, read-only value, I like to make it a bit more explicit. And here's how you can do that. I have exactly the same thing down here, but I make my value read-only, so it cannot be mutated directly. Then I have a set message, which just goes ahead and updates the actual value here. I think this makes it a bit more explicit, and in my experience in large applications, having this kind of verbose getter setter is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, you can go ahead and add some logic in here for logging as well. 
Uh, maybe you'd like to log whenever the value has changed uh, or something like that. It is a bit more code to write, but it is quite a bit more flexible. So definitely worth considering as well. Uh, I really like this pattern, especially for uh, a small single value or maybe a couple of values. Uh, it's much more simple than using a heavy handed store. And you can see everything is here in a single file. Uh, I, I do like how this works and it's very easy to follow it around as well. You can just use uh, basic TypeScript and you can just go to definition and it takes me straight there. Uh, so that is a pretty good approach. It is simple and flexible. The downside is there's no standard way of doing this. So different applications will implement something very similar, uh, but not exactly the same. So you have to figure out how it's engineered for each application you work on. Uh, so the other approach is going to be dependency injection. Uh, this is kind of dependency injection here, but not really. Uh, there's actually a more standard way of doing this in both Vue and React. The first in, in Vue at least is provide and inject. And I believe the way they do this in React is called React Context. Uh, the idea is exactly the same. I'll go ahead and show you how it works and then talk about my thoughts on this topic. So in this case, we have here uh, an injected value somewhere. Uh, I'm actually doing it right up the top. And let's just go ahead and find that one now. We have provide and inject here and I'm doing it right here. Saying provide and we take two values at least in view. The first is going to be a, a a value to identify it. And the second is going to be the actual value you're going to be providing. I'm using a message symbol here. I go to definition, it is going to be a symbol. You could go ahead and just use a plain old string. This would work fine too. Uh, but I find using a symbol is a little bit more uh, explicit. And these are going to be globally unique in your application. So these are not going to conflict. If you use a string, there is possibility for overlaps and conflicts. Conflict, so I, I much prefer to use a symbol when I do dependency injection. Either way, you call provide and you can provide this. You can do this at any level in your application. I generally like to do it at the top just to make everything nice and consistent. And the way you can then access that is simply going to your component. So we're going to go in here and you say inject. We're importing our message symbol and then we're able to access our value, which I'm just going to go ahead and render down here. Uh, so you can see this might get a little bit confusing. What I would generally recommend here is creating a composable to wrap the provide and inject values. And I kind of consider these to be a bit more low level. I generally wouldn't use these in a business uh, logic sense. Uh, let's have a look at some of the pros and cons of using this. So this is obviously built into React and Vue, uh, and that's a good feature. You don't need an extra library. It's good to rely on your built-in framework as much as possible. Again, there's no standard approach here, but there's many different ways to use provide and inject. You can see I'm using a symbol, uh, but what value are you going to pass? Is this going to be an object? Is it going to be something else? Really depends. This is all type safe, so it's not the biggest deal, but again, there is no standard approach as far as I know. I'm told in React using context can have uh, impact on performance. Uh, I guess there's probably ways to mitigate this, but you always do want to think about performance as well. Uh, so this is generally a pretty good pattern as well. It is much more common in library development. For example, the Pina management library in Vue uses provide and inject to inject the store throughout the application. I generally wouldn't use provide and inject, at least in this fashion. If I was going to do this, I would create a composable, uh, probably something like a use message composable, and I would use provide and inject inside of there, just so those, uh, those concerns don't spill out of my composable into my business logic. Uh, this can be very useful, especially for testing. It's easy to inject mock stores and that sort of thing. So uh, definitely good to be aware of this and just consider when you might want to use this over some of the other approaches. Uh, so the three different approaches, I think they're all valid and each has their own pros and cons. There is one more approach we haven't talked about, which is an event bus. I have seen some applications using an event bus to shuttle around data values. I wouldn't really recommend this, uh, at least for sharing data. Event buses can be very useful, but that's generally for an event, not for sharing data. So I would steer clear of this in general. Uh, if I had to make two recommendations, I would use a local hook or a composable for a single value. As my application grows, or if I expect it to grow, I would probably just use a state management solution. Uh, even though they can be a bit heavy handed and verbose, uh, they are standard and there's always benefits to using the standard approach. Finally, I would consider dependency injection probably in some more specific cases, or if I'm building a library or a shared module, uh, maybe to use throughout my company. Either way, I hope that gives you some ideas on how to handle prop injection or prop, uh, prop drilling, and I'll see you in the next video.